Hey everybody, it's Ed, and the future is now. And the future is Tesla versus space or Virgin Galactic. Well, why would I even compare these two? They're not even remote. They're not in the same sectors. They're not building the same stuff. Why would I compare these two? Well, if you get into the charts, you guys are going to see the same similar hyperbolic move that space is doing now, Tesla already did. And Tesla got whacked because of it. So maybe we can learn a little bit from Tesla and avoid completely getting hammered if it does, space does have a pullback, okay? So before we get into the details, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell notification to get any notifications of any stock moves in Tesla or SPCE or any other stocks that we're tracking currently that may help you in your portfolio. So before we get into the charting, let me get you the current breaking news. The only major breaking news that I'm aware of when it comes to Tesla is the Model S. Bumping up, as you can see, to 390 miles range. To me, that separates them even more from the competition. The reason we even found out about this was kind of accidentally. We were at actually uh, one of the stores last night. And we were checking out all the cars. We were talking to one of the representatives there. And, uh, and he just mentioned that, you know, in passing. So you can see the Tesla finished about 800 and change on Friday's close. And it moved up a couple dollars in after hours. So very light trading. You know, I expect if I was to guess that it's probably going to get a boost from that 370 to 390 bump. So you can see in my close-up chart um, that I think there's an impending break um, one way or another. Um, you can see my directional curve shows that there's some upward progress there. You can see all the floors there and see kind of how I break that down for the floors. That 820 is definitely the next current um, testing spot. And if it breaks through that, we could be testing 1,000 which to me, the, the break might be about 80%, 20%. I always have 80% up, 20% down, or whatever. I think that's about it. And you can see a big breakout at that point. So I've been looking so close to the near-term chart that I really kind of almost made a mistake here. And, and granted, I saw the, I'm seeing the breakout here, but I was watching Chicken Genius Singapore's channel and man, I just couldn't believe that I missed this huge flag. I mean, I was looking so short and small term that I just didn't see that. But you can see the massive flag that, they're, that they have there, and it's definitely showing a possible breakout. So I wanted to put the side-by-side -side charts for space on the left and Tesla on the right. These are long term, but you can see the hyperbolic moves both ways. OK, so and I showed you this. So if you haven't seen my video on the hyperbolic move of Tesla, go back and watch that. I'll put a I'll put a link at the end of the um, at the end of the video so you can like kind of go and check that out in specific in detail. So this morning, one of my subscribers, A to the Z, you can see on the left, asked me about the earnings report. He was worried about the next earnings report and thinks that they're going to dip potentially, possibly. So he asked me because in the that earnings report, they did have a dip. But honestly, they actually moved up and then had a dip. But you have to think about it. That was pre-IPO. This company is public now. So there's media behind it. There's all kinds of other factors driving it now. But anyway, I kind of wanted to show him and basically everybody what's going on with this hyperbolic move for space and what I see the comparisons to. Okay, so you can see where I have in the middle that it's a 3x move up, meaning, you know, it, it's gone 3x from basically the breakout point. It broke out right around 9. If you bought in at 7 or whatever, then you got lucky. Okay, that's a lucky buy. But it, there's no signals buying it at 7 or anywhere below the moving average. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with getting lucky in the market either. You know, so anyway, but when it goes up 3x, it's right around, you know, 29 right now. Now, I've been beginning research since, you know, you can see the chart tracking begins at the IPO. That's when I started researching this company and everything about it, from news to the charts to financials, whatever, you know, to the CEO, to the owner, you know. So this is this is one of the things. Started early and, you know, got in at $9 
and it's moved up 3x. So you can say, well, I mean, maybe I should be scared. Maybe I should, maybe I should pull out of some funds or do whatever. Well, this is what I'm trying to figure out, what to do, when to do it. Now, you can see we actually added more in when it broke all these resistance marks. So we added when it broke resistance, uh, when it broke moving average at first, when it broke the IPO resistance we added, and, um, and also when it broke the $20 resistance mark, approximately. And you can see now the media is coming into play, and this stock is going crazy parabolic. Just like Tesla did, all this FOMO, all this fear of missing out, now everybody's jumping in. I'm not saying this is a, a, a bad time to buy necessarily. I don't know exactly where it's going to go up uh, to as far as like what's the level. Is it going to go up to 32? Is it going to go up to 35? Is it going up to 40? You know, bottom line, it will pull back at some point. It doesn't just go up exponentially forever. One of the key indicators is volume. You can see on the bottom where I have 6 mil being kind of normal volume, or at least it's gotten into that normal volume in this upswing. And then it was spiking around 35 million in volume. And then Friday, it went to 45 million in volume. So 6 million, let's say times 5 is 30, or times 6 is 36. So it's six times the normal volume at 35 million. That's not total danger zone, okay? But when it hit 45 million, you're looking at basically seven and a half, eight times the volume. Remember Tesla, if you watch my other video, they spiked at 12 times the volume. So potentially there may be a little bit more room to run up before it has a major pullback. I'm not positive about that. I'm just saying if you compare those two hyperbolic moves and in look at it that way, it could potentially have a little bit more room to run now that the media is getting involved, now that all these, you know, retail investors are starting to dump some money into this company, that it still has potential upside movement. So what is this a chart? Oh yeah, this looks like a chart of Tesla, right? It doesn't look the same though. What's going on with this? This is the 2013 Model S breakout. Okay, where the stock traveled basically from 40 to a hunt, well, four and a half times. It went 40 upper 180. So that's a four and a half times growth. Okay, that was the beginning of Tesla basically, you know, going public and producing something. And then all of a sudden the stock goes up four and a half times. So space, if you look at it for space perspective, it's only three times the growth right now. Okay, and they haven't even done anything yet. So I'm just trying to look at the comparables here. Okay, granted, they're not, there's not a massive risk of having a bunch of millionaires die in one Tesla car crash. Okay, there, there's definitely risk with the space travel. Okay, and the main thing is, is crashing. So they have to be at zero defects. They have to. They cannot have a defect. So, I mean, th this company just hasn't come around the corner. This company has been out for years testing this, okay? And they did have a crash, but they didn't have a crash. They had a crash when they were landing the plane. So, I guess the bottom line is, what's my strategy, okay? Like I said, I never tell anybody to buy or sell anything, okay? That's up to you, okay? What I'm trying to do is document and report on charts and data, news, information, any indicators that I see so that... Other people can look at these indicators and make their own decisions for them, but in, in a, a normal way, not just on crazy news or fake news for that matter. So, but anyway, so when it comes to that, this is one of the accounts that we have the most amount of SPCE share. So we have about 541 in this account, but we have about, I think, 631 total. So I don't think I'm going to do anything with the other loose amounts, 20 and 50 that are in other accounts. I'm pretty much, if I do anything, I'm pretty much just going to work with this account. Like, let's say, you know how I buy going up and I keep adding as we keep making profit because I think that's the smart way to invest. And uh, my track record is pretty solid. And I'll get into that in a future video when I show you guys kind of some more details on that. But as far as that goes, you can also say, well, maybe you should take off some slowly as it's spiking and going up. So that's that's the other way to look at it. So I'm obviously going to keep a super close eye on this in the next few days. And we may pull off, let's say it gets to 32 or 34. We may pull off the table 200 shares.
not to just get rid of them or whatever, to potentially, if it does have a dip, then we can buy in cheaper and get more shares at that point, okay, for a long term, for more long term play in the next three, four, five months or more. So if you've seen my other video on Tesla, you know that I don't really game Tesla. Like, I don't play that too much. I, I'm very quiet on that one. We've only bought and sold a couple times in the last six months, and we've had, you know, really solid returns on everything. So space, what I, I might have to game it a little bit more because it's a speculative stock. Okay, so, and, in, in, you know, I could hold them long term and everything, but then we're just taking those dips. We're just admitting, you know, whatever, if it dips, let it dip, so be it, close my eyes through it. Okay, I'm not going to do that with space. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, play the highs and lows of it as best to my ability. So in this account, you can see we only have 20 space shares. So I, I don't think I'm even going to bother. I'm not even going to waste my time. I'll probably just kind of sit in there. I mean, unless the stock goes into complete free fall for days or weeks at a time, I'm pretty much just going to sit them in there long term. Now, as far as you can see, we have the Tesla shares and we've had Google for, for a long time. And, um, you know, so I don't, I'm not really gaming this account. So it depends on the account too. It's not just the stock, it's the accounts that you're dealing with and, and what you're doing specifically. So this is another account. It's the same situation. There's only 19 shares. We just kind of nibbled in and um, on space as far as that goes. We're, we're a little heavy loaded on Tesla in this account with 45 shares. But um, as far as long term, I, I don't see us doing anything necessarily with Tesla there. And space, we, if anything, we might add more shares to this account. But I, I don't see a point of trying to run the 20 shares out to make a profit of a couple hundred dollars on that. That's not that significant. So the future is now and the future is definitely disruptive technologies like Tesla and like space. There's a reason that we're investing in these companies. Okay, we're betting on the stock and we're investing in these companies long term. So in the short term, we might be placing bets on things, but in the long term, we're big believers in the future of disruptive technology. I mean, think about this flight. Think about how crazy three, Mach 3.5 is 2,600 plus miles an hour. That's going to be insane. If they can get the ticket price down to 10000 by some means, then one, two, or three or four of our family members may be taking flights in five or ten years from now. So I hope you enjoyed this stock update, and I'm trying to be unbiased. I'm not trying to be biased. Yes, I'm a big fan of these companies, but I'm trying to give an unbiased view of how I see the companies and the directions that they're taking. I'm not going to predict something two and three and five years down the road. You can't see that far down the road necessarily. So remember, the stock market's closed on Monday. So we'll see you on Tuesday morning, I'm sure. And keep an eye on these stocks super closely to see what type of motion we've got one way or another on either of them. We can see breakups or breaks downs on either company. And, uh, you know, obviously I think it's a favoritism on Tesla side. But as far as space-wise, I mean, it's going to be interesting now that it's going public, okay? It's kind of literally going public now because people are watching it so much more closely. I mean, the last couple of months, people haven't necessarily been paying attention. Now you see every YouTuber out there talking about space. We've been talking about it since the IPO. We've been tracking it since the IPO. So, you know, do me a favor, keep an eye on our channel, and we'll keep you updated on space, Tesla, or any other innovative tech that comes out.